Hey everyone, welcome back for episode 4. Now that I've covered the basics of ecology, I'm going to move more in depth into the topic of animals. There are around 1.5 million recorded animals, so it would be difficult for me to go over all of them. Thankfully, the animal kingdom is broken up into different classifications, so we can look at a different class each episode. For starters, I'll be going over the animal group we are all most familiar with, being mammals. Mammals have a few qualities that make them quite unique in the animal kingdom. Most mammals are covered by hair or fur, which helps protect them against predators and harsh environments. Mammals are warm-blooded animals, which mean their internal temperatures are regulated, allowing them to survive in cold climates where cold-blooded animals could not. Most mammals have live births instead of laying eggs. This keeps the developing young safe, unlike an egg in a nest which could be eaten or destroyed. Additionally, mammals have mammary glands, which allow mothers to produce milk for their babies, which is an essential food source for their young. Each classification of animals can be further split into orders. There are around 20 orders of mammals total, so I'll spend the bulk of the episode looking at some of the larger orders in more depth. The largest order of mammals are rodents. Approximately 40% of all mammal species fall under the rodent order. Being small, quick, and having large litters has allowed rodents to survive in nearly all environments on Earth. Most rodents eat seeds or plants, but some species have a more diverse diet, often consisting of food waste from humans. Some examples of rodents are mice, rats, squirrels, hamsters, guinea pigs, and prairie dogs. There are also a few species of larger rodents such as porcupines, beavers, and capybaras. Following rodents, the second largest order of mammals are bats. Bats are the only order of mammals that have the ability to fly. While their flight might seem erratic, they're actually better at maneuvering than birds and insects due to having more flexible wings. Bats are often associated with drinking blood, but most species' diets consist of insects, fruit, or the nectar of flowers. Most species of bats are nocturnal, meaning they sleep during the day and go out to eat at night. The next largest order of mammals are insectivores. The insectivore order consists of shrews and moles. They are similar to rodents in size and appearance, but mainly eat insects, as their name suggests. Seeing a mole is quite rare since they live underground, where they dig tunnels looking for food. Shrews do live above ground, but they'll also go into the tunnels dug by moles and other animals to hunt. All three of these orders share the common trait of being small animals on average, which is not so much the case for the following orders. The fourth largest order of mammals are primates. Most primates adapted to live in treetops, so to accommodate this lifestyle they have grown long limbs and tails for hanging onto branches. Additionally, primates have hands, which allows them to grab and hold things, which is a fairly unique feature in the animal kingdom. Most primate species can be found in the southern hemisphere, such as in South America, Africa, and Asia, leaving us in North America severely lacking in monkeys. Primates have a wide variety of diets ranging from species, including fruit, roots, insects, and small mammals. Most species are omnivorous. Some examples of primates are lemurs, monkeys, baboons, and apes. Apes are a suborder of primates that are tailless and include some of the smartest animals on the planet. Gibbons, gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees, and humans are all apes. Most of the orders covered so far consist of small herbivores or omnivores, with few carnivores. This is certainly not the case for the following order, appropriately named carnivora. This order contains most of the carnivorous mammals. Most are large mammals that are high up on food chains, often apex predators. Carnivora can be broken into two suborders, being feliniforms and caniforms. Feliniforms are known as cat-like carnivorans. They include all cats, ranging from house cats to tigers and lions, as well as hyenas and mongooses. Caniforms are a wider group, consisting of dog-like carnivorans. Included are dogs, wolves, bears, raccoons, foxes, badgers, seals, and walruses. Unlike feliniforms, there are a few omnivorous generalist caniforms, like bears and raccoons, whose diets are mainly made up from plants instead of animals. Following in size are ungulates, which are large hooved mammals. Ungulates are mostly herbivores that graze on grass and leaves. They've developed a specialized gut bacteria that allows them to digest plants that other mammals cannot. There are a few examples of omnivorous ungulates, such as pigs. Most ungulates have long legs which allow them to run fast and flee from predators. Some examples are deer, horses, zebras, elk, moose, cows, sheep, camels, and giraffes. 
There are a few other ungulates that have evolved to be more defensive at the cost of speed, such as rhinos and hippos. The following order are marsupials, a group that is almost exclusively located in Australia. Marsupials are known for having a pouch that mothers keep their babies in to keep them safe. Some examples are kangaroos, koalas, possums, wallabies, and wombats. The opossum, not to be confused with the Australian possum, is the only marsupial native to North America. The last order I'll be covering are cetaceans, which is the only group of fully aquatic mammals. Cetaceans have a similar body shape to fish, which helps them maneuver underwater. They are mostly found in the open ocean, but there are a few species native to rivers, such as the Amazon River Dolphin. All cetaceans are carnivores, but are split into two main feeding types. First there are baleen whales, which are filter feeders that consume large amounts of krill, up to 4 tons a day. They include humpback, bowhead, and blue whales. The other group is tooth cetaceans, which eat fish, squid, and even sharks. They include belugas, dolphins, porpoises, orcas, and sperm whales. Like primates, cetaceans are social animals with above average intelligence. Dolphins are estimated to have equal intelligence with chimpanzees, making them tied for smartest animal on earth aside from humans. Cetaceans also include the largest animals on the planet. The blue whale is the largest recorded animal to ever exist, growing to 98 feet long and weighing over 200 tons. Even with all those orders of mammals covered, there's still around another dozen that I haven't talked about. I wouldn't want to leave them out, so I'll list some of the animals in them. There are rabbits, hedgehogs, armadillos, sloths, anteaters, echidnas, platypuses, and elephants. That pretty much covers most of mammals, but only at a surface level. In terms of mammals you can see in the wild around Philadelphia, there's some obvious ones and a few surprises. A few common mammals that you can find easily in parks, on the street, or on subways are squirrels, mice, and rats. As mentioned earlier, rodents are the largest order of mammals, so it's no wonder why they're so common. There's one mammal even more common, however, which would be us, humans. There are about 1.5 million humans living right in Philadelphia. While I've been out looking for animals to record, I've also seen rabbits and even a possum. Apparently there have also been sightings of coyotes and flying squirrels in the city too. If you venture to the countryside in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, you'll likely see some larger mammals such as deer, cows, and horses. That wraps up this episode. Next I'll be going over the wonderful world of our feathery friends, birds. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two about mammals.